Hi, everybody. Hope you're doing marvellously well. Now, if you've been watching this week's episodes, you'll notice on Wednesday we did Mustang Sally by the great Wilson Pickett. And yesterday we did the famed studio tour of Studio A. So there's a bit of a theme. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try the new Fame Studio Reverb. If you recall a couple of years ago, I went to Sunset Sound and we did a demo, a demo here as well, with the Sunset Sound Studio Reverb. Fame, like Sunset, is a very unique studio. It's a family-owned studio. Rodney Hall now runs it, and Rodney's father was Rick Hall, who started the studio in, I think, 1959 or 60. Studio A was the first room they built. And in that room, Otis Redding, Aretha Franklin, Wilson Pickett. I mean, the list is endless. And of course, the musicians that eventually became known as the Swampers recorded there. So what I decided to do is like, because I haven't yet made an album there, I didn't have multi-tracks where I could do a comparison. But already knowing how thorough this stuff is done, I wasn't worried about it sounding like the room so much. I was just thinking, well, how would I use it? The way I would use it would be to take tracks that I have recorded here. Because if you know my live room, it's tiny. It's like a kid's bedroom. So occasionally we put up a single room mic. What we usually do, Eric and I, is just take the vocal mic and open it up. So we thought to ourselves, why not just take the dry drums and put them in the room? Why not put the vocal where it would be using the plate from Studio A or even the chamber? The great thing about this plugin is you can position all of the musicians where they were in the room at the time of recording. So we can bring in a little bit of room ambience and have the whole band sitting in Studio A in one of the most famous studios of all time, famous studios in Muscle Shoals. So we're taking a song by the great Steve Magora, our good friend Steve, who is, if you don't know at the moment, is out on the road touring with Toto. So if you get a chance to go and see Toto play, he is the background singer and keyboard player for Toto. He's an amazing singer himself. So we're taking one of his tracks that uh, a lot of Academy members will know called Whiskey. And of course, you can download the multi-tracks here and mix along. We're taking one that we've mixed originally on the SSL. Then we mixed in the box a couple of years ago. And now we're going to recall here and use the plugin to place all the musicians in the room. So this is the mix as we had it before using the dry sounds and adding actually artificial reverbs. Touch my lips, you set a fire to my song, and I'm gonna take it down to heaven. We push and pull and won't let go. It's a never end, Mary. Come and go. Right. So, what I like about this is it, it has a kind of a, a funky soul kind of feel. It was all recorded in this room. So the electric piano that you hear is actually a Nord. The organ is also a Nord. All great sounds, don't get me wrong. The drums are just a few mics on a kit with no room mic. So it's a perfect opportunity to put all of these instrumentalists in a room. There's positions for bass, there's position for drums, there's position for electric piano, organ, keys, vocals, you name it. So first of all, here's the original drum mix. So I actually EQ'd it here before the reverb to get rid of the low lows and the high highs. So it's just all mid range. And then on the verb on the snare, I did a similar thing. No low lows and no high highs. So this is the sound of the drums in solo using artificial reverb. It's good, but it's a little 80s in a way because you can tell there's verb on the snare that's exaggerated and there's verb on the kick, which gives it a little bit of ambience. But it's definitely not drums in a room. It's aggressive, it's exciting, but it's not authentic, dare I say. So here is the same thing. So now I'm using the Fame Studio Reverb. So if we have a look here, I've selected drums. So here it is, I've selected it on drums. So here's the kick drum. Let's give it a listen.
mute the fame reverb. Bring it up a little bit. Nice. Now, what I like about this is you've got a modern and vintage. Now, I've been in the room. They have the original vintage console just sitting off to the side. In A, they actually have a Neve in there, and in B, they have an SSL and their original custom-built console. So you can really go to town on this. So I'm going to switch this to vintage. I'm also going to leave it. I'll leave it on stereo, and I'm going to hit the console a little harder. Let's keep going. It's going yellow. It's starting to get a bit more aggressive. Occasional red. Now, what I like here is we've got an EQ section, so we can maybe high pass some of the low lows so we don't get too much of a build up of that. Bypass. Back on. Is it before? Is the after? So it's nice. It's really, really nice. Now let's do the same thing with the snare. Here's the original snare reverb. Which isn't bad, but again, it's a little 80s. Not in a bad way. I mean, it's not like it's a huge gated kind of, you know, metal drummer 80s sound. But let's see what it sounds like if we use a real room emulation. So set to drums, let's have a listen to the snare. Mute. It's obviously adding a lot of volume to it. Now let's put all of the drums together and give it a listen. Now I'm gonna to listen to what I had before. This is what I had before. I mean, it's good, but it's very artificial sounding. And what we're going for is realism. Now, obviously it's considerably louder, so we're gonna to need to do a little bit of rebalancing. But regardless, it now sounds far more like a kit in a room. But we're not there yet. So I've already got two Fame instances open, by the way, because this is important because people always ask, how's the CPU? So at the moment, we've got two going, no problem. Okay, now I am going to sum all of the drums together and put the full drum kit through the plugin. So now this is the whole drum kit. So without... Now, all of the drum kit in the room. So it's the drum mix going through the plugin. I'm going to take off some of the low lows. Muted. Put it on vintage. Drive it harder. Take it off. Back on. Sounds pretty wicked, as they would say. There's lots of other settings we can try, but I, I just want to have some fun with this and take it through. So now I'm going to go to the bass guitar. Here is without the plug-in on. Because you've got to remember, in those days, the whole band is in the room. There are no headphones. No headphones. So everybody has to hear each other. So you get bleed and you get room tones being picked up. So this is what the mic on the bass would have heard. 
let's pull it on. So here's with the room sound on the bass. Mute. I mean, I already know I'm going to love it because it feels like it's going to connect to the drums. You just hear that little bit of ambience around it. And now you're in the, the place where the bass player sat, the place where the bass amp was recorded. Here's the drums and the bass together. Do a little bit of high passing on the room because a, a couple of low notes are getting a bit carried away. Go to the vintage setting again, drive it just a little bit harder. Bring it down a little bit. So here's the electric guitar. You know, it's kind of Swampers-ish. I wasn't thinking about the Swampers when I recorded it, but I was definitely thinking about kind of classic soul funky guitar. I am no Swamper, but that's, that's as good as I'm going to get. All right, let's put the room on. So now we've got it set to vocals and guitars and uh, go to vintage. Let's have a listen. Already love it. Loving it already. So here's guitar, here's bass, and here's drums. I'm gonna bring the bass in the mix down a little bit. Bring the guitar room down a little bit. Again. I'm sorry, it's working for me. It sounds like a band in a room. You know, I'm excited by this stuff. <laughs> when you get to go to studios like, you know, you go to Muscle Shoals and you get to go and hang out in a studio which has made some of the best recordings and some of my favorite of all time. The fact that I'm there knowing that Aretha Franklin recorded two of the best songs ever in that room, that Little Richard recorded in there. We've done an episode on Aretha. We've done one on Little Richard. You know, we've done a lot of focus on some of these incredible artists that are like the bread and butter for us as in the music industry, we all recognize as the greatest singers. So here's the Hammond. And it's a Nord and it's good. And uh, here it is with the fame Studio A, where I saw, and I've got organ and electric keys here. Go to vintage. Push it. Bit of grit on it. I might drive it harder. And again, bit of high passing. Don't want too much low end build up in there. I haven't personally felt the need to do any EQ apart from high passing at the moment, but you, you might have sound sources you want to make a lot brighter. Okay, I'm, I'm already digging that. I'm a simple man. That made me happy. Okay, electric guitar, bass drums, and organ.
I mean, the way that the rooms will kind of end together when you hear the ambience, it just feels like what we want it to be. Band in a room. Okay, let's keep going. There's a sax. There's a printed reverb on it. Not going to use that, obviously. So let's see what it sounds like in the room itself. I'm going to go to organ and keys. So I've got a 20 indication on dry. Have some fun with it. Um, we've got a plate. Let's try it with the plate. And we've got a chamber. Let's try it with the plate. The plate's great. It's not good for this. It feels like it should be in the room with them. Isn't that crazy? You put the plate on it and suddenly it gets all mushy. The more I'm using the room, the more I want it to be about the room. the sax where the drum would be it's going to be where the vocal would be because it is taking over for the lead vocal so back onto the vintage sound i'm just so digging this. Okay, now here's the lead vocal. What we're going to do here is use the chamber. Here is the lead vocal. Teeth in a heavy, teeth in a heavy breath. Whoa. Wow, that chamber's insane. We went in that room. It's it's just like a little room that's painted and concrete floor, and this is without it. Teeth in a heavy breath. With it. Whoa, lose yourself with me and you. Let's try different mics. And Is it dynamic? Teeth in a heavy breath. Definitely more than mid range. Whoa, I like the condenser. Okay. Although I'll try it in the track as well. Okay, let's go to vintage, drive it a bit harder. Teeth in a heavy breath. Whoa, lose yourself with me and you. And tell me what. Teeth in a heavy breath. A high pass, just because I can. We don't need any low lows in there. I don't feel like I need to brighten it. It's already got enough mid-range in there. Teeth in a heavy breath. Whoa, lose yourself. I mean, that's it. I gotta be honest, I love the interface. And look, I'm with Vitesy when he talks about like things don't have to look old fashioned and and stuff. But in this instance, it's so dumb. I like it when it's dumb. It's got like Wet left, wet right, dry signal mono there, dynamic or condenser microphone, the EQ, high passing and low passing, um, input drive here, output volume there, uh, vintage or modern sound, stereo or mono. It's dumb. And it looks like the gear that's in there and it's not. Yeah, I like it. I'm gonna tear you down so hard. You're going Let's 
bring the decay down on the chamber. It seems a little excessive, doesn't it? So let's just bring it down a bit. I'm gonna tear you down so hard You're gonna be calling out for God And he's gonna let you know He's looking down and just keep going So take me down again Moaning, screaming, don't pretend Wanna hear my name Having that ambience in there of the room makes me want to like mute things. Like the strings seem sort of redundant now because I've got a band in a room. Why do I want to have these strings that got nothing to do with it? So I'm actually going to take the strings out. Let's do something without those strings in. Just lose yourself with me and you and tell me what you want to do. And we'll dance along the satin till the morning. So here is the mix bounce before any of this stuff was added. Young Eric over there, I'm sure, will level balance it from what you just heard, but let's have a listen. Just lose yourself with me and you And tell me what you want to do And we'll dance along the satin till the morning Nice, very safe, but nice. Now let's listen to it with all of the instruments, all the musicians placed in Studio A. Just lose yourself with me and you And tell me what you want to do And we'll dance along the satin Till the morning, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to guarantee you that if you use this plugin, you're suddenly going to have Jerry Wexler or Rick Hall production. You're not going to suddenly turn your song into an Aretha Franklin, Etta James, Otis Redding, Dwayne Allman, Wilson Pickett, Clarence Carter track. It's not going to happen. But what it will do is make you feel like you're in a room. And not only are you in a room, you're in a really good sounding room. Now, that may or may not be important to you. I like it. I still, as you can probably tell, like to track in rooms. When I can, living in Los Angeles, I go to Sunset Sound. I throw up some mics. I record musicians playing together live. There's been quite a few multi-tracks that we've given out for free where it's the band in a room bleeding into each other, the whole thing. Live vocal take at the piano, for instance, with piano bleed. So I love that stuff. I'm just going to start playing the track and you're going to be able to download these tracks with the multi-tracks, of course, and all of these different mixes. There's actually going to be three mixes included. I'm going to give you the SSL mix from 2015, October, so six and a half years ago. That mix I'm going to give you the mix that we just did earlier with the other reverb plugins on, and I'm going to give you this new mix. Let's give it a listen. So thumbs up is Fame plugin. And then I'll do this. Okay, does that make sense? Starting off with the mix that has the regular reverb plugins on it. As soon as your whiskey touched my lips, you set a fire to my song, and I'm gonna take it down to heaven. Push and pull and won't let go To never end merry Come and go around once more And know you're so insatiable So take me down again Moaning, screaming, don't pretend Wanna hear my name Through gritted teeth and a heavy breath Yourself with me and you and tell me what you wanted. 
Now, there's a little bit of a volume difference there, but it's all in the low end. It seems to have really filled in that low end. Even with the high passing, it, there's some glue happening. It's freaking awesome. I think having the ambience on the bass, even though we turned it down, things glue together because they're all in the same room now. Everybody's got room verb from where they're sitting in the room. So let me just do a quick rebalance for those. And remember, you can download these mixes for yourself. You have an SSL mix. Once again, you have a in the box using reverb plugins, and then you have the studio reverb, which is the emulation of Fame Studios. And remember, it's not just Studio A, it's Studio B as well. And it's the booths, and it's the chamber, and it's the plate. It really is an emulation of all of the great sounds of that studio has to offer. So I'm just going to do a little jiggle here. I'm going to bring down the new print a little bit more. Just push up the volume of the original print. Quite a difference now. Okay. So starting with the OG, the non-fame version. Your whiskey touch my lips You set a fire to my song And I'm gonna take it down to heaven We push and pull and won't let go It's a never end merry Come and go around once more And know you're so insatiable down again moaning screaming don't pretend when I hear my name through gritted teeth and a heavy breath just lose yourself with me and you and tell me what you want to do and we'll dance along the satin till the morning Okay, I'm being silly. I'm enjoying it though. It does what I wanted it to do. It's taken a song that was recorded in this room and made it feel like it was recorded in a much, much better room. Now, you can do whatever you like with the mix. You can take the multitracks, mix them any way you like. I know a lot of you, especially inside of the Academy, already have the Sunset Sound Studio reverb and it gets used a lot on mixes. I really feel like in particular, the vocals seem to have softened. I don't know what it is. Why do they They just sound better with that chamber on it? Have another listen. Just, just pay attention to the vocals. So this is with fame. Heaven knows you're what I need And I can only hope that what you Without it is you and me And never letting go There's definitely a glue going on. Now, some of you might not like the glue, but that's the thing that analog always gave us. It gave us the kind of a smoothing out of transients, um, you know, in digital, which we love. We're working in digital. Don't get me wrong. In digital, it's a perfect facsimile. I'm sure people will argue with me on that, but it is. It's a bit like digital photography, you know. You get a perfect, uh, super high-res photo of me and there's going to be like, you know, freckles and red blemishes and all the other schnizzle that's really going on. But if you take a photograph with me on 35 millimeter film, it's going to put a slight blurring of those edges and make me look particularly handsome. No, I doubt it very much if I'll look handsome, but you understand what I mean. All joking aside, it just smooths out some of those things. That's what analog did. Now, the, the analog thing, of course, is the emulation. You know, I can push the, the mic pre's and drive it a little bit harder, which we were doing on every single one. But it's more than that. When I mean the analog, I mean the bleed between all of the instruments in a room. Now, this may not be perfect for some of the things you want to do. 
it might be perfect for the chamber. You might want to use the chamber and the plate. This might be an alternative to you to actually get a high quality chamber and plate. That's one option. I think ultimately this is for the guy or girl that wants good quality plates, good quality reverbs, booths, rooms, et cetera, but probably is sitting there thinking, I want to kind of get a little bit of bleed in there so this stuff glues together. Because I'm using it fairly drastically at the moment because I want it to be like the band in a room. I'm trying to take this recording, which was done really in bits and pieces and put them all back in a room together. So that's what I'm trying to achieve here. But for many of you, you just might want to just like put them in the room but bring it up to maybe a third of the volume of what I did. So there's a little bit of bleed, a little bit of crossover, so everything just feels a little bit more glued because often things tend to sound a little bit too separated in what we do, which is why I champion these kinds of plugins and I also champion saturation. You'll notice I've spent a long time talking about saturation effects because it adds a little bit of hair and a little bit of extra harmonics and things tend to glue together and adds excitement. And, and that's something I feel like sometimes personally is a little bit missing in some modern productions, which tend to be very like things like are all perfectly in their place you know, everything can be heard equally, which isn't actually what I like about music. I mean, I like great songs and great production. But what I mean is like, I'm not looking just to, to, oh my God, I think they used a 57 on the xylophone. I'm not interested in that. I'm just like, is that xylophone part really hooky? Is it supporting something else that makes the guitar sound more interesting because it's doubling up? That to me is great production. Pet Sounds, The Beach Boys, that's great production. All the band in the room, all playing together. Sloop John B, all of that ambience, it's all of the musicians in the room playing together. You know, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. you know, all of those instruments are supporting each other and they're all blending together. So again, I think for most people who are serious about mixing, these kinds of plugins, whether it be the Fame one or the Sunset Sound uh, Studio Reverb, both of those have a place in your workflow and will allow you to glue things together in a quote-unquote old-school way. I hate saying that, but I did. It's a good thing to trust. And like I said, I've worked in Sunset Sound hundreds and hundreds of times, and the Sunset Sound Studio Reverb works just like The Room. And I trust these guys to have done a great job because they go to the house engineers and they ask them where all the mics were positioned, what they used. It is recorded in exactly the same way. Some of you may know that I'm good friends with Dave Kersner. Dave does do stuff with IK Multimedia, but more importantly, he is a world-class keyboard player. He plays with a lot of really talented people and has made some incredible records. And so Dave has a lot of inside knowledge on this. So while we were at Fame Studios, we got to talk a little bit about the plugin. So let's go over to Dave and he'll give us a little bit more background on the design and the functionality of the plugin. Thanks, Warren. So we're here in Muscle Shoals, Alabama at the incredible Fame Studios and we're in Studio B right now. The cool thing about a plugin like this, a studio reverb from IK, we started with Sunset Sound Studio Reverb, and now we have Fame Studio Reverb, is it brings something different to the DAW. You know, with plugins, you know, IK makes a lot of plugins, T-Rex series, compressors, EQs, and, and there are a lot of reverbs out there. Uh, but you have to sort of think of these as different than a typical reverb. Reverbs have halls, they've got digital versions of plates and things, and they're useful. But um, what the Studio Reverb series has been doing, and Fame has, is the sound of the rooms, the ISO booths, echo chambers, and plates. And this is something that, uh, these are the tools for reverb that have been used since the very beginning in the 50s and 60s. The first reverbs were actual rooms, the sound of the rooms or echo chambers, which is essentially a room, an echoey small room. It, they still sound great today and actually they have a quality, those records still sound great today, first of all. Those types of ambiences have a quality that you don't get from the other types of reverbs that you have plenty of. So, and especially when you talk about the acoustics and the character of a very specific place. Now, we've profiled some amazing studios in the series uh, and with fame, the characteristics of these rooms have first of all been used on tons of hit records. Uh, it's tried and true, it's still around today, which says speaks volumes of the studio. Um, and it's premium. It's like, listen, you know, I would say to, 
all the plugin users, all the musicians who use IK plugins and other plugins from different companies, that if you can get into a studio and you can get it, the musicians together in a room, that itself has a great sound. And then if you're really lucky, you could book a studio like Fame or Sunset Sound and get into like the best rooms on some of the best sounding records and get that sound. If you're not able to do that uh, in every situation that you'd like to, or you've already recorded, you're overdubbing and working with people, which I often do for my music and working with people in different parts of the world, um, and sending tracks back and forth over the internet, you can actually put everybody back in the room, not just any old room, but Studio A's live room, or put your vocalist in Studio B's vocal booth. And even if it's a, a short reflection reverb and it's a small, tight sound, it makes a huge difference. Just the idea, it's like the glue of everybody playing together again and the acoustics and, and, and that sound, it, it's, it, it's hard to describe because it's different than just making something sound big. You know, with, with a lot of reverbs that are algorithmic based and just, you know, big hot, it's like you make it sound big, snare, bah, you know, and that's cool for that effect. But when you want to get like an organic, warm sound, you just set up like an aug send. And with, with uh, Fame, you have four channels returned. So, and you have all these different mic positions and, um, and you have the signal chain of the studio, whether you want a vintage chain or a modern chain with the vintage console, which is a custom console that you only get at Fame that was uh, based on Altec and, and, and UA and, and it sounds great, it's a tube console. And then, or the modern uh, consoles like the one right behind me um, and the sound of the, the modeling of the, the mic pre's and, and, and the sound of the chain, uh, but the mics that they use and the mic positions that would be used um, in all these classic records going through the studio notes. And then you have these four channels, which is great. You've got two mono channels uh, and then a left and right stereo channel that you can link or you could have separate and you have panning. And of course you have the look of this classic great console that I wish I had. It's a, I love all this great gear from you know back in the day. And you have the EQ section, which was a high and low. You have a low pass and a high, uh, high pass uh, to shape it as well. Pre-delay control. You have all of this control over something very, very unique to this plugin. This is the only plugin that sounds like the Rooms of Fame. And that particular acoustic quality is just, uh, you can't get anywhere else. And when you add that to your music, it's just, first of all, you can just try it out. With IK Multimedia, you can just go to ikmultimedia.com, download it, try it out, and just see for yourself. It's hard to even describe, but to me, it's like, you, you think if it adds warmth, it's almost like the things that you want from a compressor or, or tube compressor in this, you know, saturation or something, but this adds just depth like reverbs do, but also this kind of organic quality. I think we're in a, a very exciting time because um, the necessity of record making, you know, in the, in the 60s and the 70s, it's like we didn't have the extended lows and highs that we're used to now in the digital world. So now you can have the best of all worlds, can't you? Because you can sit there and have a kick drum that's going to blow, blow out a sub bass and be absolutely massive. But now you can you can also bring in a classic quality of a room and win on all levels. Well, you know it's interesting you say that uh, because when you have this as a plugin, first of all, you can quickly A B things. Like for for instance, if you were booking a studio like this, uh, you'd probably book Studio A or Studio B. And if you, were, you don't have the quick option to go, you know, let's set up the drums in Studio B and let's go back and forth and pick the best one. You can A, B here, uh, you can go through these different, uh, the booth, Studio B, the live room, that you could choose the plate, which is a classic EMT plate. And for those who don't know what that is, you know, we see sometimes plate inside digital reverbs, but this is an actual metal plate. This is how reverb was done in a box and it vibrates. And that has a great sound still today. I love plates. I have a plate. I just got a plate, a real one. They're massive. And it's not very practical to have one. And you could, you know, sort of get kicked out of the house depending on who, you know, why do we have a plate? But you have it in a plug and it's so much better. And an echo chamber, which, you know, this is, this was, uh, IK actually uh, worked with Fame to restore this echo chamber that was used on all these classic records, Aretha Franklin and so many artists back in the day, because this was actually the way to get, the first way to get reverb. And they sound so great, these echo chambers. I, I just love them. And each one has its own character sound. And to have that in a plugin, again, it's a different 
type of reverb verb to have, just as an, an echo chamber, any echo chamber. But then to have this very specific one, again, this is one that was used on countless hit records, and this is the sound you get in this specific plugin. But what I was going to say is, and I was talking to some engineer friends who have recorded uh, many albums in these studios, um, and one of the benefits of the plugin is if you're in the room recording, it obviously sounds beautiful. It's a great thing, and there's nothing better than musicians together in the same room and everything. But you can actually put it as an aug send and get just the right balance between dry and and wet so like if you're recording in the room you kind of have the room bleed you know the bleed of the and that's it it can be a beautiful thing and there's nothing wrong with that i'm not against it but it is nice in the modern day to be able to say hey you know what this is a plug-in now and so i can actually get it as dry as i want and just bring in just the right amount of of ambience and still get the clarity and everything exactly how you want you can use it as an insert or as an effect sense you have a dry wet uh, mix built in and you can automate it and do all sorts of things as a plugin. The world we live in is just absolutely crazy because, you know, because saying we can have much greater extended low and high frequencies reproduced now because, you know, of that. But yes, the automation part is huge. I can say, hey, you know, um, let's have a different reverb on the, you know, on the vocal, in the chorus, to the verse, have more of it, less of it, change the characteristics depending on the density of the mix change the EQ, automate all of that stuff. Like, oh, now I've got an acoustic guitar and a vocal in the verse, so I can have a full frequency response. But now the band's coming in the chorus, so I'll just wipe off the excessive lows and highs that are getting in the way of the drums coming in and the bass guitar. It's, it's a beautiful thing. You know, actually, I'm glad you brought that up because um, one of the things that I think, it's like once you have these tools, then it's a question of well, what can you do with it. Obviously, you can just use it as an effect like any of the other T-Rex effects and just see what it does. And if you like the sound, great. But there's more that you could do with especially Fame Studio Reverb because of the way that it was done. There's different source positions options for, for each of the rooms. Like so let's, let's say the live rooms, you have bass, drums, organ, keys from the different uh, places that it would be, you'd be mic'd. And if you were to actually say like like with this philosophy of okay i didn't record all my musicians in a room mm -hmm. but i want to make it sound like we're all in a room all in the same room so you have the the bass part and you just send a little bit of the bass to the room and you put it from the bass position as if he was being mic'd his amp or whatever in the room from that position and then the drummer and you start changing the source positions and you can choose Broader focused, focus would be more of a direct sound. Broad would be further uh, mic uh, to get more of a room sound. And you can start placing each of the musicians back into the room, even if they're dry tracks. And of course you have that benefit of getting the perfect total dry to wet balance that you wouldn't have had if they were in a room. So you get a little extra benefit from the modern world. But if you think of it as like, let's say a tool to be able to recreate this thing that's kind of missing from a lot of people's bedroom studios or, you know, just working at like overdubbing and sending trash back and forth. It's like, well, that part's missing, you know, like where are these, there's so many, you know, there used to be so many great recording studios. And then even if so, not everybody has the budget to go into a great studio like this, but now everybody can afford to get that classic sound by using a tool like this the right way. I feel like, one of the advantages and disadvantages of modern recording is kind of the same thing. You can make things so much more forward now, and that's fantastic. I love the immediacy of a great digital recording if it's done right, but I can't, I need depth in my music, you know, and, and it, there's a battle for everything hit me in the head. And it's, it's also quite fatiguing to listen to music that has no depth to it. And just dialing in small amounts of this is, is, is quite beautiful. That's the key, actually, I think what you just said. It's, you know, I think one of the things that is a problem for a lot of engineers, especially up and coming engineers, um, is you have option anxiety. There's so many plugins and there's so many possibilities. And of course, you know, back when we uh, you know, started, it was kind of like you had tape machine with a limited number of tracks and then ADAT still with a limited number of tracks. And, and then now all of a sudden, you know, it turned into DAWs with as many tracks as you want, as many plugins, you know, you can go nuts. And, you, and now it's a question of the less is more and, and using it where it's the most effective and, uh, and not just caking everything on, but, but being, if you were to be, let's say subtle, you know, first you have to start off with a great recording. There's no getting around that. I mean, that's the analog world before it gets into digital. So you have to 
you know, get good levels. You have to get a good sound with nice mics, ideally. And you could use, fortunately, you could use a dry room these days. With plugins like this, you can get away with a vocal booth in your closet if you want or, or whatever. You don't have to necessarily record in a great acoustic space, even though I'm all for it. I mean, if you can, that's wonderful. Uh, but you do have more flexibility if you record it dry. And then I think one of the secret weapons of a plugin like this, uh, Studio Reverb, is a, like a vocal booth. Because that's exactly what you're talking about when you say just a small amount. If you, and this is something I know a lot of people until then, because they didn't really have plugins for these early reflections and short reverb times, um, and, and digital plugins like that weren't that good for that, I don't think. It's, they didn't have that right organic, real sound. This is the real sound. This isn't a digital creation. This is actually like a modeling and a sampling of an actual acoustic space and recreating the whole sound of the studio through the, you know, exactly what it would sound like with these mics, with these consoles, with these rooms and the, you know, right positions and stuff. But to be able to just, you know, aug send and bring in a little bit on the vocal, even though it's like, you are, you're already going to use, you know, a compressor and EQ and this, you bring in a little bit of that and see what it does. It may not be a drastic effect where you're like, oh my God, that's the most, but it's like in the track, it might be the missing link sure. that makes it sound like you recorded in a great studio. Yeah, I wonder, uh, you, you know, you could almost template this. You could almost take, especially if you're working with a lot of virtual instruments, you know, because half the time when you work in, and I love virtual instruments, but they're always so unbelievably well created that they lose all the sense of randomness of a human being. You know, you can't badly play a piano. You know what I mean? I can. When I'm playing a real one, I can badly hit the key and it comes out the worst sound ever, but it might be kind of interesting in the track. It, since you bring that up, that's a great point. You know, a lot of virtual instruments, uh, I mean, with IK, it's a little different because um, IK's virtual instruments like Moto Drum, uh, Moto Bass, uh, Sample Tank, of course, have built-in effects. Um, but they're not necessarily, they're more like multi-effects. They're not, they're not. I talk about effects. randomizing things yeah. all the time. I want to randomize it, Randomizing, it. and I've, I've even heard of people doing this where they would take digital keyboards or plugins and send it out of the studio to an amp sure. to mic the amp just to get this kind of thing. That's exactly what this does without having to do the hassle of that. It's kind of like put it in a room so it, it de-sterilizes it. You know, it makes it sound, like, and especially if the drums were recorded live, it's like, well, the drums are in a live room, but then your keyboards are all direct and then everybody's in a different place. It's like a way to kind of bring it all back together. And, you know, the human ear, it's an interesting thing, but like even the most non-technical person who's just a listener and they don't know, they, they, it's like a subconscious effect. They just hear it and go, oh, this sounds so good. And it's like, oh, it's a record made in the 60s or 70s. Why does it sound so good? Because they all played together. You know, the Beatles or, you know, like they, they're all together in a room and it's just all working together. And then when you start separating it out and making it like more perfect, you know, or dry or whatever, it's like, yeah, but you sort of need to bring, it's like the difference between a drum kit samples that are just on their own. I do sampling versus a drum kit and you hit it and other things rattle and stuff. And it's kind of like, you know, it used to be the engineer's worst nightmare was all these things rattling, but you actually want some of it to resonate and rattle so that it has, so the ear feels like it's a real player as opposed to something's not right. This is too perfect. This is, you know, so I think a plugin like this, Fame Studio Reverb, where you have ISO booths, you have live rooms, you have plates and chambers will allow it to kind of you get away with all those different ranges of acoustic to fake uh, electronic, whatever instruments and say, I want these all to sound like real instruments, real musicians playing together. Yeah, to add to that point. So we've been blessed to be here for two days. And yesterday, uh, uh, Rodney, uh, the owner of the studio, allowed us to listen to some incredible multi-tracks, some Dwayne Orman stuff. You know, if you haven't already watched it, there will be videos with that as well. And one of the things we really all fell in love with was soloing Clarence Carter singing and hearing him, as the intensity of the song grow, just hit that mic and everything just a little bit harder. But just, bit yeah, the, the, the grit in it is amazing. Baby, I ain't going down That road of love by That would have been the old chamber? Oh, yeah. No, no, I ain't going down That road of love So, yes, by that's myself. the chamber that's... We used it in the IK plug Now you won't go with me, baby. I guess I just have to get somebody here. 
because one of the functions here is that yeah. when you go to the vintages, you can you can drive these harder. So you can you can make it feel like yeah, this guy has just walked up to the mic and is now belting into it. There's more passion going on, and you're going to hear the room, and more importantly, actually, the exactly. gear that's recorded through start to distort in the way that it does. And it's interesting again to to your point about being in a place. We forget because there's a lot of mumbo jumbo about like back in the old days everything was so much more dynamic. No, it wasn't. It was smashing tape. It was getting compressed. Things were overloading. You know, and that adds to the energy of the track. You know, so you're getting sort of you know saturation built in by using the same equipment that was being used, the way it was recorded, the microphones, and you can emulate that by literally driving it harder. You can yeah. automate it into the vocal and the last chorus, just hit everything a bit harder and suddenly that, that, that hair around it, that energy is gonna like, you're gonna feel it in the track. Absolutely, and I, I think this is like, you know, when you talk about, let's say, well, what are the elements of my DAW-based studio for, for me to create tracks with? And you have, uh, we were talking about this before, where you have, you know, endless compressors, models of, uh, you know, classic 1176s and whatnot, and everything, you know, you could ever want, even, uh, you know, a Fairchild, uh, which would be like $50,000 now, sure, you know, and uh, to get a real one, hardware one, I see they have an unfair child, which is like a recreation, and even that's like, you know, it's expensive. So it's out of reach for most people, and everyone loves to get the inexpensive version of that in, in a plug-in, and it's functional, you can have as many as you want, all that stuff is great. But it's like, okay, so you've got enough compressors, so you've got enough EQs, but what else are you missing? And you're missing, most people are missing the studio, the sound of a studio, the sound of what happens when you, you know, have all this great gear, especially a studio like Fame, which uh, has for decades tweaked and got everything just to be perfect, you know, for so that the people, the artists would be happy here and everything. And it's like, you benefit from the historic aspect, but also, it's still a studio that's booked like crazy. We're even lucky to be in here today uh, because it's just, this is an element of if you, if you had the budget uh, that you, you would have that extra quality of production. And what IK Multimedia has done in, in cooperation with Fame is allow now everyone to have access to that thing that you're talking about. Um, and it's, sometimes it's like these buzzwords I think like can get overused, vibe, uh, atmosphere, you know, mojo. Oh, I'm famous totally for true. hating the word vibe. Yeah, <laughs> right. Me, yeah. And me too. And I'm kind of yeah, like, yeah. it gets overused. But that is exactly I'm what sure. it really is in this case. It's an authentic thing, which is like, well, it's character. I like the word character because uh, music and sound, it's like you could just say, look, reality is if you want to make an album, you can make an album in GarageBand with nothing else. And just with a, you know, I mean, if you want to just make an album, you can do that easily. You have to have the talent. You have to write good songs and perform it well. But if you want, really want to add like production finesse, and that's what I think is the exciting part about affordable plugins and DAWs and all, and all that stuff. It's like, hey, wait a minute. I could be a super producer if I watch Produce Like a Pro. I learn um, you know, all these techniques. And now I'm like, you know what's been missing is the sound of the acoustics and the rooms and the isobooth, even if I'm subtle with it. And you try it out and you realize you've had added depth to your music, you've made it sound more realistic and organic, you've given it like a, a, a quality that's maybe been missing since the 60s and 70s in records. People go, wow, your album sounds like a, like a classic, because those albums are timeless. So, you know, and now it's like- back, but you can do everything now. Like we said, I'll reiterate, you can have extended low end, super beautiful 12K sure. above openness, and still sound like you recorded in a great room. Yeah. It's like a win-win. Yeah, you just have to use your ears. Yeah. and know what you're looking for. But like what Warren was saying... I'm thinking templates. I'm, seriously, the more as we're talking about this yeah. and thinking about it, I'm thinking you just create a template. You have like three or four of these open. You go, here's the drum position. Yeah. Here's, here's all the different things. And you just send it through it as a mix option. Yeah. So that you're saying, what does it sound like if I just put it in this room? Oh, I yeah. like this. It works best on these three things. It doesn't quite work as well on this one. Oh, no, it all works. Whatever the choices are, it. it immediately yeah. gives you an option just to hear what it would be like if you actually had gone with the whole band to be in one room. Yeah, because, you know, if you almost kind of like just take, especially with a plugin like this, it's absolute total benefit in doing this, is sort of think about this, you make a template, meaning like you have the track set up to like aug send to the different, uh, 
versions of the, with the different positions and stuff, say, okay, my bass is going to go to uh, Studio A with the bass position and the drums go in the bass. And you have it all sort of set up and then you just kind of, and if you think about it, like, well, what would happen if I was actually at Fame? What would we be doing? Oh, okay, I'd have the bass player here, I'd have the drummer there, they'd be mic'd up, there'd be some bleed, some bleed. And that bleed is actually part of the realism as well, because that's what was on all these classic great records. And we, we lost the bleed. And then it's just the ear kind of hears it like, something missing, I don't know what it is. One thing that we, uh, Rodney and I talked about is most of these records were made with no headphones. All that happened is a red light came on knowing that you're in record. So everybody was playing at a level so they could hear each other. So heck yeah, there was bleed. Because if there wasn't any bleed, you couldn't hear the bass player as the drummer, and the drummer couldn't hear the drummer. It had to have bleed. Right. So it's a, it's a big part of what is missing. And for, especially for people, look, if, if you're in a commercial business, for, for instance, and everybody's trying to get movie, uh, music into film and movies and stuff like that, this is going to be a great tool because it does create moods. Oh, you want to make it sound like a classic record from the right. 60s? Great. Off we go. Well, you know, but the, you know what's great about this? And I, I like to reiterate this because I think sometimes people can get lost. Like, so yes, it's absolutely the ideal tool for doing that. And I've talked to engineers. Oh, it's uh, not just all about retro. But yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, is that, but it's it's a nut, it's a tool to add to the arsenal because it's the best way to uh, you know recreate that sound. But it's also a way to um, I mean, you can add this sound to any modern recording sure. and give it a vibe or give it something. Oh, I agree. That's what I mean by the, the fact that now we can have this extended low and high end and, and we can be modern and still create a feeling. I did a lot of work with, years ago with, with Disney, like doing you know, uh, cartoon music and stuff like that. And you start realizing that there's certain constants you know, when you move into that world of things that people expect to hear that create moods that they don't even know they're hearing. So yeah, there's certain constants that we get used to. Everybody knows a 57 and a 1073 and 1176 is like a lot of like rock that we know. But this is also a constant, like hearing music in a room because it wasn't really, I mean, I still make records with bands in rooms, but not in a retro way. We did the Frey albums in a room. We did the Aerosmith records in a room, James Blunt in a room. I mean, still a lot of records made like that and if you're on your own or the or as you were saying earlier your bands you know you know pandemic hasn't helped but your bands all over the world or all over even you know this, in different states or counties that's that's a reality how do you make it feel like there was some interplay and intimacy going on between the musicians yeah and also you know we we, we both talked about uh the uh get back documentary sure. and how incredible they were as musicians because they would do a take together so nobody could screw up because they're doing the take at the same time overdubbing on a four track or an eight track and these days we don't have to do that if you're a great enough musician or ensemble to do that then more power to you but most of us like to overdub and perfect the parts or whatever and you know maybe we're not even in the same town to do it together at the same time but, but either when people way stop doing that yeah. that's when things started to be out of time Things didn't used to be out of time when you're in a room. Right. Because if the drama was, you know, Bonham, if it was like ra da 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 and that downbeat was just a little bit late, yeah. like a nanosecond, Everyone it felt heavier. Heavy. Everybody's like, boom, when they finally come in, wow, it's so much more powerful. Well, now you, it's like when you just do the drum track, there's no musician reacting off it. It's like, oh, the drummer's early or the drummer's late or the, this feels pushed or... You know, actually, I mean, it depends who's involved in the production. When I, I produce my music, uh, what I do, uh, this is maybe a tip or just to be able to get some of that back. If I don't, I do prefer actually what you're talking about. Everybody in the room and jamming, you can even replace parts and do things. Sure. But uh, and just start with something that was made live because there is that interaction. But if you don't have that, what you do have that you didn't have back then is uh, the ability to change the time, fix time, and also not do it completely to the grid. So if you like the power of something played live, that's a little late or early, you can leave it, but then you can fix other things and then get people to overdub to your ideal perfected track. This is just a reality of what we could do. You can abuse it just like you can over auto-tune or something uh, vocal, or you could just kind of fix it and sure. get it. You want to leave something that's an art to that. But it's just it's just so much easier when musicians were interacting together. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, but again, being realistic, 
Uh, it's yeah. just not something like that. You had to do it. You had no choice back then, and, they, and you had to be really good at it because it was like time is money. You got to get this track done. Everybody's got to do it right. Mine is money. Take. <laughs> but without that, you can kind of get the best of both worlds. So you have um, the ability to perfect the tracks. Like I said, even like you know, in the process of when you have your overdubs done fix timing or tuning things and then say okay that's what i want you to play to it's not the same as being in the room but at least sonically you can bring back some of those elements with uh fame studio reverb thanks ever so much for watching i really really appreciate it hope you enjoyed that it's so much fun to be able to go to fame studios and do all of this stuff i really really love it don't forget there's more to it than just what i did there's the booths there's all kinds of fun things so long farewell auf wiedersehen au revoir